welcome to my channel or welcome back loyal viewers Let's see if I could do this without laughing um it is 3 30 in the morning so I'm a little giddy uh, I got up at the crack of dawn well it was a crack of thunder and lightning and I was having a nightmare that James Charles was here saying that he's putting out a cease and desist star I had better stop it So I hope you're all staying healthy and happy and keeping people from being all up in your business every time you leave the house. I have only left the house once in weeks and weeks and weeks and that was yesterday. And I had a woman right behind me up online saying, I cannot wear those. I cannot wear those masks, but that's a cute one. And I felt like going, I can't wear those ventilators. I just keep pulling them out, you know, they're just so uncomfortable. Well, this lighting does show it's a low budget gig, but it's still dark outside. I find my lighting is much better in the day. No matter how much I turn it down, it kind of flickers and then I look washed out looking. And hey, let's face facts at my age, washed out is only doing me favors. So moving right along. Okay, so I just discovered the overhead light helps with the washing out thing. As an aside, I just want to say briefly, uh, I'm missing my dogs and I've been enjoying watching everybody's dogs on the live streams. And since I no longer have dogs in my yard, they passed away about a year apart, uh, I have a lot of other critters. I want to take this moment to give you a quick PSA and remind you that although opossums do not carry rabies generally, uh, raccoons do. Raccoons have thrived among their biggest predator, humans, and they're very cunning and they'll do a lot to get to food. They, they not only can carry rabies, you have to be careful because their waste carries parasites that can handle all kinds of weather and then still become airborne. So uh, if you see that in your yard, clean it up carefully. Our uh, worlds are not meant to collide with raccoons. But here was me every night at 9.15 for the last few weeks. Oh, hi, Misty. Do you want your cheese? Do you want a piece of cheese? Good girl. Oh my God, she is so cute. I can't stop. And thank you everyone on Twitter who helped me name her. Her name is Misty. Everybody wanted her to be called Tea Spill. So I looked out the window and I said, are you Miss T? And she spilled onto the porch out of the darkness, out of the mist. And it became, Miss T became Misty. So she is just adorable and I can't even resist. So yeah, be very careful. Raccoons are cousins to the bear. They are wild animals and the health threat is real. Anyway, James Charles did not send me a cease and desist but Teresa Romer did send Nick Snyder a cease and desist. And I'll start at the beginning in a moment, but first let's get the whole bias disclaimer out of the way. If I had a little sound bite, it would be like, you're, you're a biased, biased bitch. <laughs> Thank you, I am, it's true, it's true. So yes, Nick has been a friend of mine. Nick Snyder has been a friend of this channel for a long time now. So I don't expect you to consider me completely unbiased. But I will ask you to consider that bias does not mean an automatic, unfair judgment of a situation. Having said that, I don't expect you to trust my objectivity. Instead, I'm going to trust yours because I believe any reasonable person looking at the facts here is going to come to the same conclusion many people have, that Nick is in the right. And I just wanna clarify something. When I say many people have come to that conclusion, let me be clear, I'm not stating that you should believe something because a lot of people should. That's a fallacious argument I don't like. And if people aren't aware of the name for it, it's argument ad populum. It's suggesting that it's true because so many people think it. I'm aware and I want you to know that I know if you were the only person with your opinion, that wouldn't necessarily make it wrong. And uh, I, just like Nick has his supporters, so does Teresa. He just can't fire his. Oh no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just... On May 10th, Teresa Romer granted an interview to Greek YouTuber Stergio Liberis. It was his first interview ever, and I thought he did a really good job. He has a very uh, sweet nature about him, and, and it is very um, free with his emotions in his interviews. But he did, for a first-time interviewer, I thought he asked some decent questions and kept it on track. He was extremely obsequious towards Teresa, very complimentary, and, and made it fluff for her. Uh, by contrast, she had a very severe countenance. For the 37 minutes, to me, she looked pretty agitated. And now it's 4 o'clock in the morning the next day. Did I lose time again? The first I heard of this whole situation was when I went to Twitter and I saw this tweet by Nick Snyder. 
That's weird, Teresa Romer. I would have said we were friends. Good to know. By the way, you're welcome for hitting 100K when you did, because before I stepped in, you sure were growing at a glacial pace. Remember even people you collabed with who had millions couldn't even get you there? So I knew it had something to do with her saying that people were not friends and it was business. I knew that before I clicked, but here is what I heard when I did click. That's why I'm saying YouTubers are just people that you collab with. They're not your friends. They're just, they're, they're, they're trying to work on their business just like you're trying to work on your business. And so, you know, when, when you collaborate with people, it's not a friendship. It's, it's a business deal. Okay, so when I first heard that, I thought maybe she's not considering her close friendships and she's just speaking in general terms and she didn't mean him and had she been asked what about rich lux she would have said oh no except him i'm sorry he's my friend but no if you listen within the context of that whole video she has more than enough opportunity to consider her friends especially when he asks her again directly so uh mm -hmm. yes what about you do you have any friend actual friend from the youtube community like somebody that you really can trust you can share your secrets your deep thoughts and everything no no wow. okay there's so much to unpack here feel free to take a potty break i'll understand this is gonna take a while now just there where you saw her say unequivocally no she has no youtube friends really Teresa? nobody nobody at all comes to mind no well just before that this context is important. He asked her about the Jeffree Star scandal video about his closet. Now, if you're not familiar, Teresa did a video where she critiqued Jeffree Star's closet in his old house. And during it, she's looking at everything going, not impressed, a lot of pink, not impressed, not impressed. And a lot of people got mad at this. Her, his stands came for her and she took the video down. Somebody else mirrored it and put it up. It's up again somewhere. Uh, in this video, she claims it was all a joke. She didn't name names, but she said a lot of people were in on it and that it was just supposed to be a joke. She wanted to do a series called Closet Wars. I wonder whose idea it was to have a game of who's got the better closet. Who's going to want a pissing contest about that? <laughs> I think we know a lot of us could have thrown our hat in the ring. Is a dream that I made happen. I just like to share it. You know, I have a lot of merch in here from different YouTubers. Um, there is space uh, below at both. I mean, not just shelves, but there is a pair of boots uh, I might wear someday. And then there's room for Christmas wrapping that I kind of, I kind of forget is there. But there is room to the side there. I don't know if you could tell, but I had like a suitcase over there. Um, there's also a bar, but. Um, not like a champagne bar, just like there's bars in there. You have to be careful. I haven't let it change me. It seemed glaringly obvious that when Teresa was ranting about nobody having her back during the Jeffree Star closet scandal, when all of his stands came for her, it seemed obvious to people she was cryptically mentioning Rich by way of omission, in a sense. And this was something that wasn't lost on Nick when he did his video, Teresa Romer is fake and we are no longer friends. She's always said that she never checks for what people say about her online and she really doesn't care if she receives hate because at the end of the day, it's kind of benefiting her, so it's not that big of a deal. But apparently Teresa felt that someone who knew her and someone who knew Jeffrey, who could this be? Hmm, can't quite put my little finger on it, but apparently someone should have spoken up on the interwebs and told everyone to stop sending her hate. Here's my deal with that. Not his responsibility. We all know who exactly you're talking about. At the end of the day, it doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to know who you're talking about, girl but not his responsibility. You said the shady comment. Obviously, Jeffree Star's fans are very, very protective. They're going to come for you. Did it harm your views at the end of the day? No, might've boosted them. Did it harm your engagement at the end of the day? No, might've boosted it. That's all you care about anyway. So moving on from that. That sounds right to me. And I don't think it's a stretch for the imagination to suggest that Teresa is harboring resentment over Rich not giving her more public support over the Jeffree Star closet thing that frankly blew over very quickly and a lot of people didn't even see. I'm not sure why she didn't just make a video saying it was just a joke and that she was just doing a closet wars thing. I don't know. I, 
I didn't see him, you know, do anything publicly, but I've never seen her do anything publicly to defend him either when he's on the hot seat. So that goes both ways. More and more, I see that the reason Teresa doesn't believe in friendships is probably because she's incapable of them herself. And to show you how bad she is at friendships, let me just draw uh, your attention to her video response to Nick Snyder, her video, The Time Is Now, where she not only threatens Nick with lawyers, but she says, I was on the phone with Rich Lux before 40 minutes last night, and he said he doesn't know why Nick did it either. That is putting somebody in the middle. That is saying, he's on my side. He stuck his flag in, in the ground Teresa Romer. He's on Team Teresa Romer. That's what you don't do when you're a good friend. And there's so much wrong with her having a problem with Rich in the first place. And that's my opinion that she does. She hasn't said that. But there's so much wrong with it. Because here he is with his friendship with Jeffree Star. And Jeffree Star has 18 million subscribers. That is so good for Rich's career. Why would he end his friendship with Shane, with, Jeff, with Jeffree? If she thinks it's all business anyway, what's the difference? Then she should understand that he can't kill his business for her based on something that's going to be fleeting anyway, something she did. Why should he end his friendships to show an allegiance to her? I'm really glad he didn't, considering how little friendships clearly mean to her in the first place how little stock she puts in people, what little faith and trust she has. This is not a hobby to Rich. Teresa Romer could walk away from YouTube tomorrow and be completely unscathed, hell, today. You know what I mean? If Rich ended this today, he's not going to go and be in Monte Carlo next week. This is something he needs, not wants. And something Teresa doesn't seem to understand is that friendships can still have a dynamic where you don't mess with your friend's business. It doesn't have to be either or. You can be friends with someone and say, I'm not going to destroy or affect their business in a bad way because they're my friend. So there are boundaries about business, even in the most solid of friendships. In her video, The Time Is Now, where she says life is too short and we have to lift each other up, she waves around that NDA agreement and is clearly threatening to lawyer up. She just posted a Twitter post that was like, not bothered, have no time. But she had time to have her lawyers try and steamroll and bully Nick Snyder by sending him an email. A lot of stuff is going through email during the pandemic. Uh, and it says that he has violated the NDA by using private information for his personal gain. There was nothing private in his video, and we all know that. He was talking about a public interview she did that was so weak and lame and clearly an attempt to intimidate him. And I'm disgusted that she took the time to do that. This woman started out her video as a memorial to her son who passed away tragically in a car accident. A lot of us knew that. She's talked about this in the past. Well, Nick Snyder is someone's son, too, and he almost died. And you're taking the time to try and bully him legally. And I find that unconscionably wrong. I don't know why she didn't rethink that. But apparently, Teresa Romer thinks it's against the law to offend her. She also took the time to like vile comments referring to Nick as a junkie and coming for his recovery. I don't know if it was her or her assistant, but it's under her video. I think Nick Snyder gave that cease and desist the proper response. He tweeted, Nothing more than public knowledge was discussed in my video. You do not own any of the material presented in my video, such as the Stergios interview and a video I own on my Nick Snyder channel. So here is my response. And there's a video of him lighting the cease and desist on fire. A lot of people are talking about the Houston meet and greet and saying that Teresa Romer mishandled it, that she was not kind, etc. Well, I'm going to give you my experience because I was there. I was at the meet and greet. I started out my video. Some of you may even see the funny video I did where I pretended I wasn't allowed in. I thought that would be something I could have a laugh with Teresa about, but I never got to meet her. Now, I will say I wasn't there when everybody got the you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here thing with the security guards. Uh, Jen Love's review said she had to beg to go back in to use the bathroom because she didn't know she was going to get rushed out. Um, I left early. Part of the reason why is I don't like parties. I don't like crowds. I'm, I have a lot of social anxiety. But also, I felt very weird. I mean, I hid behind my camera a lot. And I felt really weird being in someone's home when they're in it and I'm getting a tour through the home, but not by them, like a museum style. And it Felt, I felt like an imposter. I just felt like I didn't 
need to be there. Listen, every party, anything you go to, the hostess sets the tone. And this was uncomfortable. This was awkward. There was a lot of really nice people there. Thank you to people who came up to me. Um, being even that I'm socially awkward, I'm approachable. You will always hear Teresa Romer say she's approachable. I'm approachable. I'm very approachable. But people think I'm not approachable, but I'm approachable. I'm here to tell you that's bullshit. Do not approach her. If you see her, you will get embarrassed. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> that was my experience. Because... I did not say one word to her at her own party because after she took pictures, as you may have heard, she did an escape to a side room where she had Rich Lux come through there too and just wave to everybody and go in this little room with her and mingled with no one. She spoke to no one. She mingled with no one. It was uncomfortable. And I was there when I heard people say, oh, go in the back, you know, whatever, to Nick. And Nick and Nady, uh, Petty Page, these people chose to stay and mingle with the people who came to meet them, okay? There, there's got to be meet and greet in the meet and greet. <laughs> people got the greet part wrong <laughs> or just greeting, no meeting. <laughs> they knew that they had to add that. Some people came from as far away as Maine, maybe farther, I don't know. I did talk to, to one person and, and we've become friendly who had felt she wasn't going to get to have the interaction she came there for. And I'm like, let's get back online together these guys are very approachable, which they were. And I just, I just noticed that that meant a lot to other people. If you look at the pictures, I do have footage and I don't feel comfortable putting it up. I've gone through some of it. There's footage where th there is somebody who goes up to Teresa, I'll consider this later, and she smiles and she hugs her. And then she's all about the camera. But the girl had come up to uh, Nady, Rich, and uh, Nick, as well as Petty Page, and they all were focused on her. But she was right next to Teresa, who started to ignore her. That was my impression. She was looking at the camera, looking at the camera, and not at that person. So maybe she was nervous, okay? Uh, maybe she was nervous, and, and that's hard for her. But you can see in my footage, even though I have a lot of social anxiety, there's footage where all of a sudden my camera tilts to the side because somebody comes up to me and they hug me, back when you could still hug people. And uh, I remained approachable. And I think that's really, really important. Uh, I have met uh, some A-listers, some Oscar people who didn't act like this, who didn't make you feel this uncomfortable. So I don't know who the heck she is, but it got worse. This is why I I'm mentioning this at all. Because a lot of people said, why didn't people say this happened sooner? Because what are you going to say? This person wasn't nice to me. Like, she doesn't have to like anybody. That's, you know, it's not the law that you, she, Teresa Romer meets me and she has to be nice to me. If she doesn't want to, that's up to her. But I'm just telling you what happened. The next day, I was invited to uh, Rich filming the Santa Baby thing. Some of us went there and I was with a friend. I was with a couple of friends. But at this point, I'm sitting with a friend and Teresa Romer comes in. There's nobody but us. And we're women of a certain age. You think we'd have something in common? And I said, hi, Teresa. And she throws her coat over the chair and just goes, hi. And about faces like I, like I was a leper and it was airborne, which is kind of funny for a woman who doesn't think the coronavirus is real. And she said her life hasn't changed at all. Her housekeeper's still coming to work. She about faced so fast and never spoke to us again. And my friend laughed and goes, yeah, whoever I am, because she didn't even acknowledge my friend. It was like, what are you, what are you the first lady? Who the hell are you? Listen, you don't have to like us. You don't have to interact with us. You don't have to talk to us. But most people, I think, it's been my experience, most people wouldn't do that. Very unfriendly, very cold. She has no use for anyone. Now, I had heard that about her, but I was going to reserve judgment because I liked Teresa Romer when I first saw her. I thought, here's a woman who's living her best life and she's friendly and she's, I got to tell you, that person you see on camera, to me, that's not the reality. Okay, and then I started listening to her motivational stuff more. And there are there's so much you could talk about here, but you listen to her in these videos, she's like saying, you know, you know, you have thousands of dollars and you want millions of dollars, you have a million dollars and you want to be a billionaire, and it never stops. How is that motivating? That's a recipe for never being satisfied. That's just one of the things I noticed about her. She's just ambition. She doesn't believe in people taking a day off. She's very happy to tell you all to get back to work. Uh, she tells a story of a guy, my friend at the country club, her friend, the waiter, I don't think so. My friend at the country club, he's a waiter. You know what he does in the morning? Gets up at six o'clock in the morning, goes and works a full shift at McDonald's. And I ask him why he doesn't. He says, I got to feed my family. And he doesn't ask anybody to watch his kids. Well, yeah, someone's got to watch him because he's never home. This is not a happy story. This is not a rags to riches story. 
But my interest in Teresa was not about the money because I've seen people with money before and I get it. I'm old enough to get it. She's old enough to get it. Why is she still saying she wants fame? She's in her 60s. Fame has very few benefits. That should not be the goal. Really, it's not. And I think she wants to be worshipped. She's trying to still fill this void, in my opinion, because it, it's never enough. And she thinks that's a good way to live. What are you motivating people to do? You're just showing your money and not really talking about the keys to happiness. Okay, money, the reason people always think money equals happiness is because money, although it cannot buy happiness, it can remove suffering. Poverty will buy you suffering. So people think that relief would bring them such joy and they're right, but the novelty of that wears off. What I liked about Teresa Romer was that she seemed approachable and I believed her that she was approachable. I was very disappointed to find out that, you know, she was going to look at me like she smelled shit. And so uh, she was not approachable to me and it wasn't just me or I'd say, maybe she just didn't like my face. It happens. <laughs> and I thought, for sure, you know, this would be an interesting person to talk to, not because of the money, but because instead of a rags to riches, she was a tragedy to happiness. Another thing I did like about Teresa Romer was I've seen people call her lucky and she has suffered the most intense loss. I think a lot of people would not take kindly to being called lucky after losing a child. Do you think I would trade places with her? What mother would want to trade places with her? So my feeling was any happiness she gets for the rest of her life, she deserves. Because personally, I don't know that I would be able to survive that kind of loss. I don't envy her. I certainly would never tell her she was lucky. And I just wanted to make her laugh. A lot of people wanted to just uh, meet her and say, hi, we have mutual friends, you know, and it would be nice to say you met her and, and that was that. But you didn't see a lot of videos coming out after that party saying how great she was because people saw that side of her and just said, well, okay. It, it's basically what Nick said was it just didn't seem like a big enough thing and he sort of just kept it bottled up. I asked Nick, I said, Nick, on the record, were you mad more for rich than for yourself? Because that's the impression I got. And he said it was both and that he just felt it came out of nowhere. That he just, you know, and I could tell now watching his video that he felt kind of blindsided, I think. Like he didn't know that she felt that way or that she would denounce in such a way of omission, sort of denounce Rich Lux. Again, I don't want to put Rich Lux in the middle. And I was glad to see that Nick tweeted to people to stop tweeting Rich about it and stop putting him in the middle. I thought that was a good thing to do. It's certainly not something Teresa Romer did because she clearly requires a special kind of allegiance. <laughs> It's amazing to me that Teresa feels like she has to threaten Nick with lawyers to preserve her reputation. Nobody made her look worse on that interview than she did. When she said things like, when you asked me who my favorite designer was, I should have said me. <laughs> um, probably my favorite designer is Christian Louboutin because I have 75 pairs of Christian Louboutin shoes or 78 pairs or whatever. She kept calling him Louboutin. Who calls him that? I mean, nobody expects you to say Christian Louboutin, but you're American, you can say Christian Louboutin like everybody else does. Where did this Louboutin come? Is she trying to put her pinky up with the vernacular? It's very strange to me. And she tells you she had lunch with all of her favorite designers. Christian Louboutin, I had lunch with him. Well, if you called him Louboutin over lunch, he probably called you Nouveau Riche when you left. I'm sure he didn't call her new money. That's just my active imagination. <laughs> but Louboutin makes him sound like he makes pretzels instead of shoes. I hope she starts getting that right. Here's something she said in her video that made me even more uncomfortable. Remember I told you the meet and greet was kind of awkward? She says in her video, people said she mishandled it and she didn't. She made it sound like it went on for an hour or so longer than it was supposed to. And that is not the facts. People have the receipts on that. It was supposed to go from 12 to four, but she shut it down around three or so. And she's saying in her video, I'm paying for all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm paying for the valet. I'm paying as long as I keep feeding these people and providing drinks, they'll never go home. That's what my husband said about the raccoon. That's what she thinks of everybody. That we were just peasants, freeloading moochers. So are you getting the picture? This probably isn't the best life coach. 
I'll let Teresa tell you in her own words why it's such a hunk and waste of time to watch other YouTubers. Over the, over the course of the last 10 years, I've written three books and, um, you know, and that's probably the other reason why I don't sit around and watch YouTube is because for every minute that you spend fulfilling someone else's dreams, you're not making your own dreams come true. Who so I don't, yeah, so I don't, I don't like to, you know, if I'm watching other people's videos, that's putting money in their pockets and that's taking time away from me where I should be working on my YouTube channel or my career or my future. Now, I can understand saying that you have to put your own life career ambitions first. There are a lot of YouTubers who have families, children, and they're running their vlog. They don't have the time to devote that they might otherwise devote to watching other YouTubers. But that's not what Teresa is saying. She's saying, why would I do anything for anybody else but myself? It's called giving back. And where would Teresa's channel be if her viewers felt that way? It seems to me Teresa, having as much as she does, probably has to protect herself from users all the time. And you could see how a person might feel jaded about people always wanting something else from them. But it seems to me also you can transcend any interaction that started out as business, as her friendship with Rich should have transcended any business aspect of YouTube. But perhaps you can't complain about people being all business with you when you expect your friends to act like your employees. You may be guilty of blurring those lines. And I can tell you I'm just one more person making a video in support of Nick Snyder. And if I didn't make this video, he wouldn't care. Our friendship would remain unchanged. Nick doesn't require that kind of allegiance. I haven't seen any videos in support of Teresa, and if they are, it's not from friends because she claims to not have any, and that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. This was a very telling moment in the interview for me. No, no one wants to collaborate with you to be your friend. They want to collaborate with you because they want to benefit from it. But Teresa, friendship is a benefit to a lot of people. Yes, I was trying to benefit when I drove three hours to collab with my friend Rose, Beauty Boomer. I was using her for friendship. To some people, it does make it worth it. And maybe we are in the minority, but where would we be if that was the only thing we saw from people that they were using us for ambition? And I think it's sad that you think it's understood that the word benefit automatically means fame and money. For anyone who feels as Teresa does, that YouTube is just about business and people using you, I wish I could impart to people like that, that if you transcend that feeling, if you take a chance on people, you can develop wonderful relationships that make your life richer and fuller. That doesn't mean that no one will ever hurt you, but friendship is worth so much more than just money and fame. Fame offers empty worship, whereas friendships are people who know you. Money can't celebrate your life the way a friend can, and you can make your friends feel good by celebrating their lives. This mutual celebration, this connection, is your solace. It is the summit of happiness. And I promise you, if you ever see me in public and you want to say hi, I will not turn away from you or be dismissive. I promise you that. Because friendships are the best kind of currency. On behalf of myself and my latest furry friend, Miss T, I really appreciate your view. I'm going to be honest. She's just in it for the kibble. She's using us all. But at least she's upfront about that, so that's good. But let me know what you think. I'm looking forward to your thoughts as always. Do you think I was too hard on Teresa? What is your take on the situation, and do you think it could be resolved? That would be nice, but I don't have high hopes about that. So anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you're still even listening. And I will see you all next time. Housefrau out.